the stories of mahabharata retold by shudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the mahabharata i hope you are enjoying listening to them as much as i am enjoying telling these stories Pandu became the king of Hastinapur and Vidur was appointed the prime minister. In time, Dhritarashtra got married to Gandhari, the daughter of the Gandhar king Subal. Before the marriage, when Gandhari came to know that her husband is blind, she decided to share the fate of her husband. She took a piece of dark cloth and tied in a permanent blindfold. but gandhari's brother shakuni was not happy with this marriage he didn't like the fact that the kurus especially bhishma would offer the proposal of marriage with the blind brother dhritarashtra and not the handsome king pandu besides gandhari's decision to put on a permanent blindfold also made him very unhappy he felt his sister was unfairly treated by the kurus and he vowed to take revenge on bhishma pandu and his clan Kunti the adopted daughter of king Kunti Bhoj selected Pandu as her husband at a sayamvar arranged by her father Kunti was also known as Pritha and she happened to be the aunt of Krishna who plays a very important role in the story but Kunti had a little secret and we'll know about it later Pandu also got married to Madri sister of king Shalya of the madra kingdom so pandu had two wives kunti and madri and dhritarashtra had gandhari as his queen after fighting many wars and winning tons of riches for his kingdom pandu wanted to take a break so he requested his brother dhritarashtra to take care of the kingdom and went on a long hunting trip to the forests with his two queens kunti and madri they traveled many countries and forests and was having a great time one day pandu went hunting in the forest it was a dark and dense forest pandu was alone he left his entourage behind with the hope of enjoying the thrills of hunting alone suddenly he heard a rustle in the bushes ahead he quietly stepped towards the source of the sound and there behind the thickets he saw a deer couple playing with each other and making love he silently raised his bow aimed and shot his sound guided arrow pond was an excellent archer and he made no mistake he heard a loud cry but the voice was of a man and a woman He ran towards his target the deer couple and there he found struck with his arrow a man and a woman embraced in each other's arms the man was rishi or sage kindama and the woman was his wife kindama was still alive but was bleeding profusely his wife was already dead pandu thought oh what have i done I've killed a rishi and his wife and and that too when they were in love he kneeled down beside the dying sage and said oh rishi i beg your pardon i made a grave mistake i thought i saw a dear couple and and unknowingly i shot you please please forgive me the rishi raised his head and said pandu pandu how could you be so cruel how could you kill a couple in love be it human or deer or any other living being it is the most heinous crime one can commit and i cannot forgive you for that i rishi kindama hereby curse you you too will die a painful death when you try to make love to a woman and saying this he breathed his last pandu was devastated he was terrified he knew a rishi's curse can never go wrong he, he didn't know what to do 
he went back to his wives and told them of the incident. Kunti and Madri were shocked to hear of the curse. It implied they could never have a child from Pandu. But still, still they tried to console Pandu. Kunti said, Please, please king, don't worry. We will never demand any physical affection from you. We will never ask for a child from you. But Pandu was still very upset. He decided he'd give up his kingdom and the luxury of the palace life and live in the forests forever, like an ascetic, a hermit. Maybe he thought that this would be the right penance for the crime he committed. Maybe, deep inside, he also carried the faint hope that his sacrifice might not go unnoticed by the gods and they might release him of his curse. So Pandu sent a messenger to Hastinapur informing Dhritarashtra of his decision and asked him to take care of the kingdom with help from Bhishma and Bidur. He had also requested his queens to go back to the palace. But Kunti and Madri didn't agree. They said, O king, we are your wives and we have the right to share your fate. We cannot go back to the palace without you. So the three started their life of penance and hardship in the forests along with the other hermits and sages who lived there. Days passed, weeks passed, months passed. Pandu, Kunti and Madri were slowly getting accustomed to their life in the forest. Living off the land, of the nature, seemed quite enjoyable now. But Pandu was still unhappy. A disturbing thought kept on bothering him. The thought that he could never ever father a child. The thought of leaving the world without an heir was horrifying to him. According to the Hindu way of life, a man can achieve his salvation only when his son performs his father's last rites. Besides, leaving no heir also meant the end of his line. One day he called Kunti in a private and said, Kunti, I, I just cannot bear the thought of dying without leaving an heir behind. Kunti was silent. Pandu said, Kunti, you know, if a man cannot bear a child, his wife can get the services of a family member or a Brahmin to have a child. It is accepted in our tradition. He even gave the example of his and his brother Dhritarashtra's birth. Kunti, Kunti, you and Madri must do the same. I insist, said Pandu. Kunti said, O king, O king, if you permit me, let me tell you a secret. Long ago, when I was a teenager, Rishi Durbasha came to visit my father's palace and I had the honor of taking care of him. Rishi Durbasha was extremely pleased with my hospitality and granted me a gift. He gave me a mantra which gives me the power to invoke any god I want and have a child of him. So, if you desire, I can use the mantra and have a son from any god you'd like me to. Pandu was ecstatic with joy. He said, Kunti, Kunti, you must use your power and get a son for me. Please, please do so. Please, please invoke Dharma, the god of righteousness and religion, so our son would be the wisest man of all. Kunti went to her room in the hut chanted the mantra to invoke dharma and in no time dharma appeared before her and in due course of time Kunti gave birth to a beautiful boy named Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira means one who can stay calm and steady in the midst of a war and Yudhishthira indeed grew up to be the most learned, wisest and most righteous man who could never tell a lie. But Pandu wanted more. He asked Kunti to invoke Vayu, the god of the winds. Kunti obliged and Bhima was born of their union. Bhima grew up to be the strongest man in the world. Next, she called upon Indra 
the king of the gods and had a son from him who was named Arjuna. Arjuna grew up to be the greatest warrior and archer in the world. Watching Kunti giving birth to three sons made Madri want a child too. She asked Kunti, Kunti, would you please share with me your mantra? I too would like to have a son of a god. Kunti said, but, but Rishi Turbasha didn't give me the permission to share the mantra with others. Pandu said, please Kunti, please be kind with Madri. Please let her have a child. Kunti said, O king, your wish is my command. Madri, I will share the mantra with you, but only for once. Kunti gave her the mantra. Madri then invoked the twin gods, Ashwins, the celestial physicians, and of them were born Nakul and Sahadeva, the beautiful twins. But Kunti was not happy at all. She said, Madri, you tricked me. I permitted you to use the mantra only for once, to have one child. But you invoked the twins and abused the power. I withdraw the mantra forever and neither of us would be able to use the mantra anymore. So Pandu had to stay happy with the five sons, Yudhishthir, Bhim, Arjuna, Nakula and Sahadeva. As sons of Pandu, they came to be known as the Pandavas. In the meantime, in the palace of Hastinapur, Dhritarashtra and his wife Gandhari were not happy at all. When Yudhishthira was born, Gandhari was already pregnant. But she did not give birth to any child for almost two years. When she heard that Kunti had given birth to a boy, she grew impatient. She called a maid and asked her to bring an iron rod. She commanded her, Hit my belly with this rod! Hit me! Hit me hard! The maid was scared. How could she hit the queen? She was, she was reluctant. She was hesitant. But Kandar yelled at her, I told you, hit me! I, I don't want to stay pregnant any longer. Hit my belly. Hit hard. Hard. The maid hit her hard. Several times. Kandar screamed in pain and and went into labor. Soon, soon something dropped out of her womb. Gandhari was in her blindfold and she couldn't see. She asked the maid, What is it? A boy? The maid was silent. She asked again, Tell me, tell me what is it? A boy or a girl? The maid said, Oh queen, it is neither. It is a ball of flesh. Hard as a rock. Kandhari was devastated. She cried out loud and asked the maid to throw the ball of flesh into the river. Suddenly, Vyasa, the Vyasa Deva, appeared. He said to the maid, No, no, don't throw it away. Kandhari said, Rishi Vyasa, your boon didn't come true. You once blessed me with a boon that I'll have one hundred sons. See, see what I've given birth to, a ball of flesh. Vyasa said, Gandhari, don't despair. My words will come true. He called the maid and said, Take this ball of flesh and put it in a jar of fresh water. Soon it will break up into one hundred fetuses. And then, Take each fetus and put them in a separate jar filled with ghee. The maid did so. And after a few months, one hundred sons were born in the jars filled with ghee and other nutrients. First was born Duryodhana and next Dusashana, followed by ninety-eight more sons. Gandhari also gave birth to a girl named Dushala. The hundred sons of Dhritarashtra and Gandhari were known as the Kauravas. Back in the forest, 
Pandu was happily spending his days with his wives, Kunti and Madri, and their five sons. Yudhishthir, Bhima, Arjuna, Nakul, and Shahadev. He was no longer depressed, and maybe the thought of Rishi Kindama's curse was slowly fading away from his memory. It was a beautiful spring morning. Pandu and Madri were roaming in the forest, picking fruits and berries for their midday meal, while back home Kunti took care of the boys. The air was intoxicating with the fragrance of spring blossoms. Madri looked beautiful in the golden sunlight falling on her through the new leaves and branches of the trees above. Pandu, walking next to her and watching her beauty, felt a stir in him. Suddenly he felt an irresistible urge to embrace Madri and make love. For a while, he tried to hold back, but but soon his desire overwhelmed him, and with uncontrolled lust, he embraced Madri. Madri was shocked. Stop it! Stop it, O king! You cannot do this! Don't you remember your curse? But no words reached Pandu's ears. He was too excited and the thought of Kindama's curse vanished from his mind. He embraced Madri and showered her with kisses while she tried her best to escape from his clutches. Right then, Pandu felt a shooting pain in his chest. He couldn't breathe. He clasped his chest and dropped down. And the next moment, he was lying dead on the floor. Kindama's curse has come true. Why? Why did you have to do this to me? Why? Madri cried out loud. Hearing Madri's cries, Kunti came running and found Pandu lying dead with his head on Madri's lap. Madri was crying hysterically. Kunti knew right away what had happened. She screamed in rage, Madri! Madri, how could you let this happen? How could you do this to our king? Why did you have to lure him to his death? Did you forget his curse? Madri said, believe me. Believe me, Kunti, I I tried my best. I tried my best to stop him, but he didn't listen. Soon Kunti realized this had to happen. A rishi's curse could never go wrong, never go unfulfilled. It was his destiny. It was their destiny. She calmed down a little and told Madri, Well, in a way, you are lucky and and I envy you. You at least saw his happy face before he died. Now let's go and inform the boys and our neighbours. His funeral should be arranged. Madri said, Kunti, I have one request. I want to give up my life and follow my husband to the next world. I couldn't satisfy his desire in this world. Maybe, maybe I could do so in the next world. Please, please take care of Nakul and Sahadeva as your own sons. I know, I know they will not miss their mother in you. Kunti tried to persuade her from doing so. But, but Madri was adamant. When Pandu's funeral pyre was lit, she stepped into the fire to sacrifice herself with the hope to join her husband in the next life. The sages and hermits of the forest, who were the neighbours of the Pandavas, advised Kunti to return to Hastinapur with her five sons. Your sons are the rightful heirs of Hastinapur. There they will receive the best training under the guidance of Vishma and Vidura and grow up to be the future rulers of the land, they said. So Kunti went back to Hastinapur with Yudhishthira, Bhima, Arjuna, Nakul and Sahadeva. Bhishma greeted them with open arms and tears in his eyes. And the Pandavas started the next phase of their life in Hastinapur himself. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bhamik. 
Audio engineering, original music, and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.